Mania 36. Club Atlantis. Man, how did y'all feel about this uh, pay-per-view? Honestly, it was better than I thought it was going to be. I mean, no crowd, basically. They closed the camp, except for the performers and some commentators. It was strange. For a couple of matches, it actually worked, particularly what we'll talk about later on. But, yeah, it was kind of weird. Um, so, but it was an entertaining weird. I think, I think this will be a WrestleMania that will go down in history as one that we all had very little expectation for. We thought was going to, we thought was going to be memorable for all the wrong reasons. But I have to say, WWE when they're backed into a corner, they tend to deliver some of their best stuff. So, so they they exceeded expectations definitely. Um, see, I, I was on the opposite end. I think people were jumping the gun before the show even started. Oh, it's going to be trash and everything all over the internet saying that. But I said, man, after that first match, y'all going to calm the fuck down and it's going to be cool. And yeah, it delivered. And like Unc pointed out that it helped a lot of the matches out. Because I, I know people like the goofy, yes, yes, no, no. Y'all like that goofy shit. I can't stand that little goofball, cornball shit. So, the fact they're not being the crowd there, I loved it. Yep. The focus yeah, think, was on the performers and not the fans. Yeah, I think for certain situations, not having a crowd there helps certain matches. And it's, you can tell certain, certain matches it hurt, but certain matches it helped as well. Right. Like, it only really hurt, I think, one or two of the matches to me. Like, McIntyre and Brock, it hurt that because that finisher fast and people popping going crazy. Yeah, I, I think it would have been dope to have a crowd there for that, but other yeah, than that, that actually did hurt black crowd. Well, see, that and maybe the Braun Goldberg, like those are the two that it hurt. But everything else, it didn't drag down too bad. Not having a the crowd there, it actually helped. Now, open it back. Alexa, the former champs, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Ironically, the people that took the belts from months ago. So this is kind of like a long way to rematch. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed this. I enjoyed it a lot. I mean, I thought, you know, this was actually a pretty solid opener. I think I really liked it. Yeah. yeah it was okay because in a way I kind of sort of already knew possibly the outcome of it because of I mean of certain, uh, certain circumstances with Kyrie saying and the possibility that she was going to be leaving because her contract is up uh, she don't have that long so her contract is up I think by the end of the month she'll be done so I kind of knew that if she lost she's done she's gone and to be honest, I think it'll be best for Oscar because Oscar's kind of been put on the back burner, and uh, the women's division needs a monster heel since Nia Jax is nowhere to be found. So, on the or it's a plus, but the match itself was okay. I mean, I've seen it before, but it's, it was okay. It wasn't bad. It was a great way to start it off. You know what? You just highlighted something that it's an angle no one even thought about, Nate. Nia Jax what? could come back and be Becky's next challenger. No, she, that's the reason why Bianca Belair has been brought up. They so brought up Bianca. Gonna be it's gonna be Bianca. What the hell are they doing with these rosters now? They just send they Bianca up. Bad. They send Chuck you down. You bring up somebody from NXT. When you see an NXT call up suddenly come through, that means they're going to gut the entire roster again. Which means that the women's division in NXT is going to be heavily gutted. And they're gonna have to find a way to get more to get more uh, more bang for their buck because this really doesn't make any sense for Bianca to be called up, but she's being called up, which means they're gonna call others up, which could be a chance they might call up Rhea Ripley one day. That could have been a one and done. It doesn't look like it is because 
I mean, the fact that she came out to save her husband, and at the time, even though we knew behind the scenes they were married, they kind of acknowledged it in the wrestling world, which shows that they may make them into something like they did with Lana and Rusev. It's always been their, it's always been their, their trump card, not trump card, but it's always been a calling card. When they find out somebody's married or a couple, they pair them together, make them into a power couple or like a power group. It's something they've always done. So I wouldn't be surprised she's going to be teamed up with the Street Profits, which I think would be a mistake because she don't need to be a valet. No. I don't like Bianca Belair, but I know that she actually does have talent, and she doesn't need to be anyone's valet, which I think she just might be. Yeah, that that would be I think, well, about, the, about your point you were making about Nia Jax, I know there's rumors that she's supposed to be coming back soon, so... If she's she been playing for nearly a year. She's been behind the scenes for nearly a year. They could have brought her out, but who they bring out? Santina. Right, right, but 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 that's what I'm saying, Nate. Like coming out of this whole Baszler getting her ass whooped, and we're like, man, who who's left for Becky to fight? Well, Nia and Becky never really happened. You know the whole face breaker shit. Ever since Becky's been but champ, she never had to crack an eye. They're not gonna be so apt to have her out there after she had. Double knee surgery. I mean, she could cut the the Chris Saban promo. You do to both my ACLs, both my ACLs. Yeah, she could do that now, but. Oh, Chris! Didn't you tell me you busted your ACL? No, no, no! I broke my ankle playing ball up in um uh, high school. Never an ACL, thank God. Thank God. Yeah, my ACL way worse. Yeah. Uh, but since well, since it now drifted to Becky Lynch. Might as well go to the Raw Women's Championship. Oh, gosh. Y'all, y'all really didn't like this? Y'all really didn't like this? I understand 100%. Here's the thing. I didn't say the match was garbage. I said it just of all the women's matches we got on in on the two nights, this one was the weakest in my opinion. Yeah, I, don't, I don't like the tag match better than I like Becky and Shayna. It was, it was weak. I will, I'm not gonna lie, it was what? weak, especially for anything that was Becky. But, but it wasn't a bad wrestling match. It's just the finish made no sense. Why? And kind of yeah. undermined everything that they did to beef up Shayna, especially the yeah. fact that they literally fed the entire female roster to yeah. her. And I think. Yeah. Pretty much blame one guy for that one. Yeah. Because what's on the street is he's not Becky and Shayna Baszler. Nah. I'm not either, but but it, it's not that she lost. It's the fact that it. I was cool with it. I thought it was dope until during the match. You were like, "That's the same way uh, Kyrie beat her." I'm like, "So they just recycled oh, the same up. finish?" Oh, <laughs> Yeah, they did like Bailey did that. That, that that's the thing I didn't like. Like if you mm -hmm. the problem that I have with with the man character. I don't know what she's supposed to be now. Is she a heel? Is she an anti hero? Is she between what? Because she does dickish moves with only heels do. And then she goes out and does, like does a promo like Stone Cold and then she comes out feeling self conscious like a face. What the hell is she supposed to be? That's and that's the problem I'm having with the man gimmick now. I think it's lost its identity. It made sense uh, like a year or so ago, but now it's kind of losing its theme, man. It only that's works when you're going against certain people. Like certain characters play well depending on the opponent. Like Broken Matt, it makes 100% sense when he's fighting Jeff, but you try to take that broken shit to fight someone else, it doesn't mesh as well. The man worked good going against Chuck and to a degree Ronda. But you can't go, I'm the man fighting Liv Morgan and all that shit. Like, it don't mean the same thing. And the thing is, friends, that's, I think, and Auntie Nancy will agree on this. I wanted, the reason, I, I'm a Becky fan. I know this. I wanted Becky to lose because I wanted her to get home. Because I wanted her to become, I wanted her to get that doll back. And I wanted to get that draft, you know, mm -hmm. to try to get her dog back. I thought but, the match was good. I just, yeah, I just agree that the ending was kind of weak. 
Like, yeah. like, like at first, because I I didn't see the Kyrie Shayna match, so I thought it was dope. But once Nate told me Shayna got beat the same way before, yeah. I'm like, you didn't make no adjustments. You keep losing in the exact same yeah. way. Like that's kind of weak. Out the Brent, the Hitman Hart playbook. Cause how many times did he use that? I mean, I know some copies say they keep bringing oh the Stone Cold Steve Austin that Survivor Series, and I'm like, I can go back further than that. That the Roddy Piper WrestleMania eight. Yeah. Yep. It was a. It was good. I was cool with it. You know, I was entertained by it. Up, you know, try to get through all the try to get through all the cards, so we don't want to just keep talking too much. Of it. So, yeah. Y'all, y'all want to talk about this train wreck? Uh, Sammy Lane versus uh Daniel Bryan. Y'all want to talk about this okay. bullshit? Uh, okay. A lot of people said this was great for every review that I've watched. A lot of people said it was great. They always gave it B's or four stars or three stars. The reason why I think it's bad is because I've seen what Sammy could do. Nate, the only reason they did that, and I'm going to tell you why. If Rusev and Lashley had that exact same match, they would shit on it. They're just always no, it's Sammy Zayn, it's Brian. Good match goes, dude. I'm separating myself. No, I'm not talking about you. You brought up the other reviewers. Oh, they be. I'm like, if someone no, else did like the same thing, like y'all would say it was trash. No, but if they no, but if they actually liked it, then they liked it. You know, from all the reviews I've watched, they liked it. They riding Brian Jock. That's all that is. Yeah. No, um, they have the right to their opinion, but I personally that. We know, us four know what Daniel Bryan and Sami Zayn can do in the ring. So, them doing that type of match didn't work for us because we know what they can do. Yeah. That worked for other people. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. Problem. But it, it didn't work for us. I'll call out the IWC and say, y'all riding Brian Jock. That's what the fuck they doing. Because if Rusev and Lashley had the exact same match, they would say it sucked. But because it's Brian, yeah. it's cool. Not, B+. Plus. I mean, they might, but I'm not going to predict what they what they. That's the thing. Sami Zayn, I've never had an issue with his in-ring ability. When he in the ring, he dope, but everything else, he trash at. I mean, to be honest with you, Sami Zayn is a, is a pretty entertaining character. That show with the Kevin Owens feud that he's had for over a year. And not to mention, we know how great he was um, when he actually wrestled, wrestled Shinsuke Nakamura before he left to go to the main roster. What's Sami Zayn's I greatest promo, Nate? <laughs> What's a memorable Sami Zayn promo? Give me one. Just one. I can name one. Yeah, give me one. <laughs> Only one. On NXT, when the feud with Kevin Owens started. When he was yeah, there. when he finally mm-hmm. won. Yeah, when he finally won NXT title, only to lose it. Just as quick. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm just making that clear. I've never had a gripe with his in-ring ability, but everything else has been trash, trash. This match, what I mean, it was, it was all right, but uh, it wasn't all this great. I mean, people like what they like, but I think they ride it just because Daniel Bryan. I mean, I'm like, you get off. I hate to sound like one of these street dudes that always be saying something vulgar just for the sake of it but really on this one I was like get off Brian's oh god yeah oh, they were just they, they just dick riding but other than that the match was whack not because of what Brian and Zayn did it's because the first five minutes was this keep away goofy shit that's yeah. what made it whack that's what made it whack Mm-hmm. Once they got away from that, it was cool. But that first five minutes, it was just goofy as fuck. So yeah, I mean the, the, the whole time when they were playing keep away, that felt like hours when it shouldn't have been that long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. But to be honest with you, for me, I just know what Sami Zayn can do. After seeing him in Takeover, I know mm-hmm. he has a very aggressive side. I want to see more of that. I'm tired of, I don't want to see him as the goofy guy that goofed up. 
or everyone's favorite, um, everyone's favorite taxi driver. But <laughs> people call him that because of his pants design, his old pants. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. I don't know taxi driver joke. I get mm-hmm. it. They told a story, it just didn't work for me. Let me put it this way, since we mentioned Daniel Bryan and Sami Zayn, let's bring up a match that actually surprisingly entertained me. Elias versus Baron Corbin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That happened before that one, and it was better in my opinion. Yeah, it was. It was. I honestly didn't expect to be entertained, and y'all know how much I hate Baron Corbin, but I was really entertained by him. Yeah. They kept shifting gears when they needed to, and the speed of Corbin was what really had me like, whoa, that big motherfucker can move. He can really move for a guy his size, so I was entertained by it. Baron Corbin has a great move. He has a great move. Yeah, but to be 285 pounds and moving like that, like damn. So I was impressed with that. Yeah, he moves pretty fast, and now, I mean, I'm not going to lie, it seems like with the whole King Corbin gimmick, he's actually, it seems like he's caring more, so I got to give respect for respect to this dude, that was a good match, I was really surprised, mm-hmm. and Elias got a lot better in the ring. It was. Yeah. But the ladder match, though? Oh, oh my god. god. Oh, god. It the was really action was awesome. But that yeah. they had me instead. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped laughing at that thing. I, I, I was laughing more at the way. I was laughing more at the way Jimmy threw Kofi into that ladder. That shit was funny as hell. Oh, oh yeah. They didn't take it easy on each other at all. No, but it's but the look on their faces, they were like, uh, what? Like, that wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and the job force, still call him Johnny Boone, the job force was trying to act like he was in pain, but you can even see him laughing. I'm glad that they gave us a creative. Yeah, the ending was creative. We've never seen it end like that, so I was cool with it. You know, I enjoyed it. I mean, I thought the match was really—it was fun. They had those crazy spots. It was absolutely insane, and I liked it. I liked every bit of that match. Mm-hmm. I it was fun. I liked it. I think it's gonna be one of those sleeper hits on this on this whole two nights. It's gonna be a mm. sleeper hit as the time goes by. That's one that you, know you could say an audience would have helped. Probably get this bit from the crowd that was on night one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Drew Gulak versus Cesaro. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, but actually, that's the sad part. Drew Gulak versus Cesaro was actually better than Daniel Bryan and Sam, Sammy Zayn. Yeah, it was. Better. Yeah. The latter match is one that would have benefited if the crowd was there. That's oh, yeah. one that would have benefited. Yeah. 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 But it but it was yeah. still cool for what it was, but Oh yeah. And since we're talking about matches that would have benefited from a crowd, let's go to one that we're gonna have some fun with. Oh person Dolph Ziggler. I loved that match. I don't care what anybody says. I shipped them hard. And even if there wasn't a lesbian triangle, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with how it ended. We need a feel-good ending. You know how Vince McMahon loves the swerves. That's why people were predicting that it wasn't going to happen. But it, I, I'm happy it did. Yeah, so I had Vince McMahon down and be like, look, we know you like swerving, but right now ain't the time for that. Let's get yeah. the fans a happy ending. Yes. Yeah, don't, don't pull another Jericho Trish Stratus. Yes, that was so disappointing because I shipped them so hard to only get like my face broke. I'm like, no. I'll say you don't want you don't want your ship to die. That's basically that's the lesson. Yes. You don't want to deal with your ship dying, and you get like, oh no. But, but can you imagine? Can you imagine if there was a crowd full of like tens of thousands of people? That saw Mandy and Otis kiss. That would have been a moment up there with Miss Elizabeth and Randy Savage. 
<laughs> I cannot believe you just tried to make that comparison, H. I, I, I said with a crowd. I get what you're saying, though. I get what she's saying. It ain't that level, but no. I hell I'm no. Saying, I'm saying, I, I think I think it's what No, it would have been the biggest pop of the night. We got to give, uh... We gotta keep giving forty-year-old virgins a lot of hope out there. So, look, I know you probably would, both you and Ir- uh, uh, Irvin and Prince would. I'm not shocked, but the thing is, is that Mandy and Otis, for some reason, they're adorable to where you just can't help but ship them. Like Otis, maybe a bit more be a stocky dude, but he, him and Mandy, they're like. But, it's not adorable. But, I'm sorry. But, uh, <laughs> although for the ending, I got nothing against it. He's built like a oompa loompa. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, hey, he kissed Mandy. He kissed Mandy. He's a oompa loompa that kissed Mandy. <laughs> hey, Mandy, you got nothing against it. He was. And not to mention, big ups to Mandy and that Sharukin uppercut to the nuts. Have fun with Dolph Ziggler's leftovers. Dolph been bending that over for two months now. That so. would have made China so proud. You would have made China so proud. I said that. Maybe she rest in peace. But she yeah. got China, China would probably call that uppercut from heaven. It's like, yeah. Salute yeah. to you, Mandy. Yeah. 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 Y'all ain't even going to acknowledge the fact that Dolph was tapping that. We just supposed to forget that Dolph Ziggler wasn't giving her the penetration for the last two months. Uh, all I know is just because Mandy's beautiful and he's supposed to be pretty don't mean they tapping. Dude. He still got the dude's leftovers, though. How you know his leftovers when there's been no indication that they got, that they got together? Yeah. There was. No, just because they're two beautiful people don't mean they tapping it, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm talking oh, kayfabe wise. Kayfabe wise. No, no, no. I saw the behind the scenes segment with Otis and Mandy, and after it was all over, man, it's like, let's go get some steaks, babe. I'm like, okay, do you think that anybody like her would say, let's go get some steaks? Plural? I got that chick. I'm like, she's a keeper. Keeper. No, <laughs> he, said, man, he still got the leftovers. He did. Dolph, Dolph hit it first on some Ray J shit. True. <laughs> true. 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 I had a feeling that you were gonna say that. I don't know if I you would. Man, he still take an L, man. Nah, nah, nah. Look, you gotta understand. Just because you're beautiful, don't mean you don't have standards. If you know you're beautiful, she you clearly know. has no standards. Who could the fuck she with now? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Damn. All this fool do is lick himself like a cat and nod like an idiot. Come on, man. He, he, licks himself like he a do cat. be licking himself like a cat. Prince, that was cool. Prince, you don't see when he be licking himself and putting. Come on, and man. She's like laughing her ass off every time he does that. Okay. Agree. Agree. I agree with that. Shoot, after having some steaks, he's Comic book guy from The Simpsons is loving this storyline. Best story ever. It was a few good moments that was supposed to happen. I thought the match itself should have been more brutal on Otis's end. I realize he's a happy, goofy character, but he should have been. I mean, granted, he did put a pretty good whooping on Dolph, but. But here's the thing. I don't think that Dolph is going to be involved anymore. But this is just my own personal prediction with this storyline. It's going to continue. But we're going to find out who the masked person is who outed, outed mm-hmm. out um, Sonya and why Sonya did it. In my opinion, I think she has the hot for Mandy. I think she always had the hot for Mandy. But that's just my... That, I mean, that's the only direction you can go. I'm yeah. sorry. That's the only direction you can go with Mandy. I mean, with uh, Mandy and Sonya. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Now, Matt himself was pretty decent. I thought Otis should have been a little more brutal on Dolph. You can't, a little more brutal? How brutal? Can he toss him over? He tossed him out the ring and he 
he hit the floor hard and knocked him into some chairs. Nah, that's not enough. He beat his homie up pretty bad, Nate. He should have whooped his ass. Yeah, he beat up his boy bad. Mm -hmm. It should have been like Lesnar Cena level bad. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a broken up a cut to the nuts is pretty much as brutal as you can get. It should have been a Lesnar level ass whooping with all that uh, Dolph put him through. Yeah, I'm I'm real curious to figure out what direction they're going to do with Sonya, but to be, honest, to be honest with you, Fire Desire was really kind of fizzling out anyway, and we know that Mandy was the one people were looking at the most, so Sonya can come out and shout on her own. And plus, if she really, I doubt they're going to have any um any um, angles for the gay community with her unless they do the love triangle with Mandy and Otis being in the middle. I mean, on the outside. You know what I mean, a mm -hmm. triangle. <laughs> I didn't like the match, but if y'all liked it, cool. I thought Otis and Dolph was weak, but the ending was good. The match actually played out what the storyline was building up to. He should have beat the shit out of Dolph. No, but here's the thing, just like how, and I'm just using it as an example, then we can move on. Just like how you keep gushing about episode two of Alter Carbon saying it's like near perfect, and me and Irving keep saying it builds up very well. This is how the storyline was. The storyline built up so well to have a good payoff. Even though it wasn't as brutal, I'm kind of happy that it wasn't because, to be honest with you, the last thing you want to do is to make it go left. I kind of wanted to stay where it was. Because if she beat the shit out of him, then, to be honest with you, that prob Mandy probably would have stopped it, and then they would have went out the direction. That's just my own guess. But either or, I'm kind of happy that it wasn't too brutal. It was enough to show that, hey, I'm pissed. Dolph shouldn't have been hanging with him like that, though. Like, he shouldn't no, have been hanging with him Otis like that. Otis' character, though. Otis is a fun-loving guy, but if you piss him off, he's gonna, he's gonna beat you down, but he don't want to kill you. But he almost killed your boy, though. Oh, boy, because I know how this is gonna go. All right, what's the next match? Because we're gonna keep on going about that. <laughs> yeah, but we, we agree that the ending was cool. It was a feel good in it. That part we agree with. The match is what we don't agree with. I, I thought the match was good. We were able to get a response <laughs> from the crowd video wise. Because they did a video of one of these football players from um the 49ers that actually recorded himself doing a reaction watching WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. So I wish that they actually had more reactions done. Like more video reactions or internet reactions piped in. So we want to see a thousand Napoleon Dynamites gushing over this shit? <laughs> Yeah. Do we really yeah. want that? <laughs> I'm just saying. No, in a way, I kind of wish it was a little bit more let's um, get, reaction. Let's, let's, but, get one, let's get one of the weaker matches out of play. Alistair Black versus Bobby Lashley. Hold on, y'all thought that was weak? Yeah, it was kind of weak, dude. Man, that shit was cool as hell, man. It was better than Otis versus Dolph. For French, I think that, that match... It had no story. It was just there. We know it was just one of those messages. Hold on. It had no story? What are y'all talking about? Oh, I get what you mean by it had no story. It had no like um, build up to it. That part I agree with. But the match itself was cool. It was cool. It's not the best the match. Alistair Black carried that shit though. Alistair Black carried that shit. It just had no purpose. And not to mention Bobby Lashley. Surprised he didn't tell Lana to shut up because she was just a Right, right. But that's the story they were telling. So, yeah. I, and it didn't go on forever. You're a better person for marrying me. I'm just like, why can't you tell her, shut up? Just, just shut the hell up. <laughs> just, they, made, they made me keep teasing their brother because of that. Because Lana was screaming at the ring. Oh, they're gonna get a divorce. All because of little. Oh gosh, wrestling. <laughs> well, can we go? Can we, can we shift gears to one of my favorite things that we saw? KO versus Seth. How'd y'all oh, feel about oh, this? That yeah, that's... I liked it a mm -hmm. lot. KO versus Seth. Yeah. Honestly, I liked it. I will say this. I will say this. I know I defended Kevin Owens saying, no, get on back here. We, let's have a disqualification, no disqualification match. Match. We gonna have a winner or loser. While I did defend Kevin Owens, when I think about it, I said it should have been that to begin with. 
Yeah, they should have made it no DQ to begin with. Instead of just making it a regular singles match and then doing the whole DQ yeah, thing. They were like, trying to do something different with the show. We no, see what they were trying to do, though. They really, they really <laughs> needed... I don't think Kevin Owens should have gotten the win. I think they should have held off on that so it could have a bigger payoff once all of this stuff is over and there's a crowd. But I agree with really that. need to keep the momentum with Seth Rollins being the, um, the Monday Night Messiah. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. He needs, but you need to build him up to be like, the one thing they did right and then they just screwed it up at the end was how you got referees to be following him. You have random people that you would never see agree with everything he's saying. You got people you don't see in the locker room. He's getting a following. I'm like, yes, this is what you're supposed to do. And they should have did that with Bray, but they kind of screwed that up. But I digress. The thing is, is that if you have him beat Kevin Owens, that can not only make Seth Rollins seem more powerful, he kind of had a point with a lot of things he said in his promo. I like the match a lot. I liked it a lot. It's not the fact that the match was bad. The match was really good. It's just the story that comes behind it. You want to keep the characters built up. So you didn't yeah. like the um you didn't like who won, but the match itself you were cool with. Yeah, I was cool with the match. I didn't I didn't like the fact Kevin won. Yeah, I agree with that. that the whole thing what are they gonna do with Seth now? Yeah, I think what Auntie Nate's is saying. It would have made more sense. So yeah, you could have had Seth Rollins once when win one and went to no DQ and then have Ke- the story of Kevin Owens. He screwed himself over trying to get that, trying to get that decisive win. You could have yeah. kept that story going. I, I will say this: Kevin Owens at the spot of the match. Yeah, when he jumped off the WrestleMania. He didn't side. jump off. He just <laughs> fell off that shit. No, he just, he ran, just ran, and ran and fell off the shit. He ran and fell. <laughs> Yeah, he, he didn't stop. He didn't stop like Shane McMahon. He just went. Yeah, like <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't stop him. He just ran off the side and just ran off the shelf. He just ran and fell off that shit. I, I thought it was. I like. I liked it oh, a lot. Oh yeah. But and uh, let's get one of the other random matches out of the way. Uh, the Street Profits versus uh, and Austin Theory for the Raw Tag Team Titles. Oh. I am officially an Angel Garza what fan. It was, but yeah, it was just a random match. I okay, I'm not even getting into around how much I hate the Street Profits and Bianca Belair. So I'm just gonna say that, that match is something that you see on Raw. It should yeah. not be on the card. Yeah. 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 They it should at least be a basic tag that match, match and put something up in its place. Yeah, it was just a basic tag. I think nothing must need to be said about that. It's an Angel Garza. He's got protection. Yeah, yeah, he he got the juice for He's real. He got protection, but he ain't gonna be pushed, and we all know why. But we ain't getting that. Yeah, <laughs> Angel Garza, Zelina Vega, and Montez Ford were the MVPs. Zelina, that's the thing. Andrade has the damn personality of a damn eggplant, but Angel Garza, though, when he's out there with Zelina, she's not well, overshadowing him. Angel Garza can speak um, better English than Andrade. It, it's not even that. Angel Garza didn't have to say a damn word. It's the way he carries himself. He just has it. He's got he it. He kisses people in the crowd. He's just like a Latin version of the rap, ravishing Rick Rude. I, I like this dude. I, he's got he's got Except charisma. Like like time. like Jeff Hardy didn't have to say a word, but you just felt it. You just felt it just by looking at him. Yeah, but yeah, Hardy, we're just waiting for him to jump off something high. Angel Garza, even though he does have Selena Vega and he does use mm-hmm. her, he doesn't have to rely on her. Right, she's not overshadowing him. She's not eclipsing him like she does Andrade. No, but you know why? Because Andrade cannot speak English very well. We Asuka can't speak Oscar. English well. Asuka don't have to say a damn word, but when she come out, you know what time it is. Japanese more now. But that's what I'm saying. Language barrier and charisma are two different things. I'm not talking about talking ability. I'm talking no, about just no, natural I charisma. Was fine in NXT because all she had to do was glare at you and make you crack up your pants. Right. But that's you what know, I'm saying. Without saying a problem. word. When she tried to speak English more when she was in the main roster, she couldn't have been taken seriously because you, you just felt bad for her. Mm-hmm. I felt bad for her 
every time she tried to speak English, because she was just struggling. Right. Like, like she even without touching a mic, she though, Nate. more comfortable. But even without touching a mic, some talents just have it. They just have natural charisma. A lot of them. I'm sure y'all could think of people who didn't have to talk. Ben Wyatt didn't have to talk, but when he walked, you knew you knew what time it was. Yeah, that's true. Lesnar, yep. Lesnar don't have to talk. Andrade was just. But he has a mouthpiece though. Yeah, but yeah, but but he doesn't need it though. He just yeah, walk he out there, and you know what time it is. Yeah, he, no, he needs a mouthpiece. He just showed. He needs a mouthpiece. Here's he really the thing, does. Here's the thing with Brock Lesnar. He doesn't. He he. he, he Paul Heyman is like a. It's like an add on to what Brock already has. Brock, like he's like that missing piece to Brock. Because we we've heard in the past. Brock, I don't think that Brock is too bad if you heard him speak in the past, mm -hmm. in the early two thousands. But being Paul Heyman speaking for him. Mm -hmm. He just adds something different, something to it. So he ain't got to do the talking. Paul does that. And Brock can just go out there and go in the ring and move ass. Right. Best. Angel Garza has natural charisma. He just has it. Andrade is a watered-down bargain basement Del Rio. Ooh. Ooh. Which means he's good in the ring. I didn't say he was bad in the ring. But he's not as charismatic. Wait, you're saying that Del Rio wasn't charismatic? It did my destiny. It did my destiny. Me. That's what I'm saying. Del Rio had more than Andrade. He's a discount bargain basement. Del Rio. I think, I think Del Rio. Oh, God. Was God. Let's move on to the next match because something tells me there's a reason why you're picking on Andrade. I'm not, not going to get on that. No, no it on. was just the Zelina Vega is with Angel Garza, but she don't outshine him like she do Andrade. That's all she I was saying. She outshines both the men. What are you talking about? <laughs> no. But the thing is that, okay, she can, not only can she speak for both of them and speak better than both of them, she can fight. But she's not fighting at all. Like, I, that's the one thing that bugs me. I'm like, when you're in women's matches, you act like you don't know what you're doing. But when you're with the men, you're up there, like, scrapping with the best of them. Yeah, she's yeah. going to be well, in the race. So we know. I mean, she acts like she don't know what she's doing, but... Know Selena Vega can wrestle. Yeah, she reminds me of a shorter version of Evil East. Yeah, we she know we know that Selena Vega can wrestle. Yeah, she kind of reminds me of Evil East, and that's why I'm just like, okay, we know you can scrap. You need to start scrapping. But what was it? That, so what was that after night one? Okay. Okay. We just kind of went in random order. Yeah, we, we just went in random order. Yeah, but. Uh, first one. I'm, I'm absolutely curious of what you guys thought about the Boneyard match. First one, yeah, but before the Boneyard match, let's get the quick one out of the way. Universal Bron title match Goldberg versus Braun Strowman. Oh, that was a piece of shit match. Yeah. I'm gonna say that right there. That match was awful. Yeah, but I, I kinda knew, I was like, he ain't putting him in no jackhammer. Goldberg can barely Which I'm sorry, and I'm kinda with everybody else here. And I'm and, and I mean that, that that match was garbage. But yeah. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you. No, it, it was a huge mistake. I'm looking at a lot of people that believes it was a big mistake to put the belt on him in the first place. Man, y'all tripping on that. Y'all tripping on that. No, no. The it reason was, why they put it on Goldberg, it made sense. The belt on him. Because well, of Roman. Why? Because he's already had it. Bottom line was, he was the champ going in, and Strowman was the champ going out. And Roman was the champ going out. All I got to say is, for people to say, oh, the match was too short, this is now they wanted them to do them flips. Do some more flips, Brian. Be like Ricochet. That's why I didn't. So I'm really yeah. shocked that y'all thought that meant that match was gonna go five minutes. I was shocked that y'all predicted that. I put four oh minutes. God, what? 
I didn't check my draft sheet, by the way. I don't think yeah. I did. I'm like, five? Y'all thought five for real? Y'all didn't even say one? Not y'all. That was real who said five. I said four, though. You still wrong. Y'all give him too much credit. He ain't gonna last no four not, minutes. What's wrong with y'all? Not now. Not now. He's too old. He's old for the last. He ain't gonna last time. like four minutes. What's wrong with y'all? I'm able to say maybe two minutes. I'm gonna maybe one something. It should have been two. It, it should have been two. Two should have came out of y'all's mouth. And now he's dead. It's like it didn't make any sense to put a belt on him in the first place. It did make sense. It, it did make sense. sense. Actually, it, it didn't mean anything. And we all know now actually, that Braun Strowman's yeah. going to be in Travis and Sam. It made 100% s- sense at the time because the goal was yeah. to get it. The yeah. goal, the goal, Nate, was we're going to get Roman cheered going in and going out. That's why it made sense. Uh, but it didn't yeah, have to, the title didn't have to be there. It didn't have to be there. It could have been later. They had every way to write this without the title involved. But Nate. He didn't Win. But Nate, here's the thing: no if Roman went in there and fought the Fiend and beat him, what's gonna happen? Gonna They're gonna boo him out the building. Opponent, yeah, though. I'm not saying it should have been the Fiend. I'm saying that the Fiend should have lost the title. So because Roman fights the Fiend and gets booed again. Always planning on having the Fiend versus Cena. They were always planning that. So why did you drop the belt and give it to Goldberg just for him to drop it again, just as quick? And give it to Braun Strowman. Yeah, well, no one predicted Roman Reigns to be out, even though they should have with this mm-hmm. pandemic. But right. still, it, it was dumb. It, there were so many ways to write this around. They could have. I mean, it, he's already done a passing of the torch. He's already um. So he didn't really put away the Undertaker. That kind of messed him up. He needed to have a legit legend. I hate to say it, but he is one to pass the torch. As much as I can't stand Goldberg, and it's a bad taste in my mouth to say that guy's a legend. He is one. So it, it would make sense to do a passing of the torch with him instead of it being a random title match. Because Roman deserves better than somebody who can't go more than two minutes. That's like being a virgin and having sex with somebody who lasts five seconds. Oof. It's true. I'm sorry. It's disappointing. Well, pretty much. Well, it was pretty much a quick, quick match. That's why I don't get why people get mad at it. It's like if it was ten minutes long, okay, but you know what you gonna get with Goldberg. It was pointless. Number one, and yeah, people are uh, really disappointed with the Fiend because the Fiend actually had a theme going. (laughs) He had a thing going with his character, and everything made sense. Every person that the Fiend went after was somebody who wronged him, and anyone that went after him changed. And they actually kept that consistency up. Then they ruined that by inserting Goldberg in there for reasons. Only to take his title for reasons. To get Roman cheered? No, no. It has nothing to do with that. They're not going to not cheer Roman because he's a cancer survivor. No one wants to be that type of guy. They would have booed him if he beat the Fiend. No, he would not have been booed. They would have booed him for beating the Fiend. And be honest, if he won the Royal Rumble, he could have picked whoever he wanted to fight. He didn't even have to beat the Fiend. He could have been a, had a rematch with um um. He could have had a rematch with Brock. He could have picked anybody he wanted. He he didn't have to Time, so that's what's going and ain't nobody gonna sign up to fight Brock. <laughs> that's well, a failed drug really test. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really matter because he's not. Yeah. yeah. Bone yard to the bone yeah. yard. What y'all think about that? We're talking about something that matters. Yes, this match. Yes. Yeah. Baker versus AJ Styles. Yeah. 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 Produced 
the Boneyard Mask was the same guy who produced the file deletion. Oh, Jeremy Boat. Yeah, Jeremy Borash. He direct. He actually did produce the. He produced the Boneyard Match. Mm. Yeah, you, I, watched, I, I watched the What Culture video on that. Yeah, they had a lot of fun facts on that. He was. In, it made sense. I mean, you can probably like, and um, and, to, and I think Simon said this. And it was like, if you actually watch um some movies, you can tell what the signature of the um of the director that did it. So I guess you can probably tell that this was file deletion all over. Like Jeremy Borash, whose his signature was all over it. If he did the file deletion, it was done really well. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> and it was a way to cover up. Like, let's say if you would have had a regular match between Undertaker and AJ Styles, it probably would have stuck. Even as good as AJ Styles is, the Undertaker's too broken down. But doing it this way. Yeah, it covers up a lot of Taker's weaknesses at his yeah. current age. It I think this was weaknesses. one of the matches that benefited more without it being in the ring. Yes. Yeah. I thought it was fun. I enjoyed every bit of it. I thought it was great. I really yeah. did. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Boneyard match, it was for, dope for a lot of different reasons. I, like I said, when he saw the back lost, he should have booted him in the ball, <laughs> got off the motorcycle, got the hell up out of there, <laughs> left like maybe a tank of gas left, pulled it over to the side, and just kept running. What was that NWA sold? A hundred miles and running. A hundred miles and running. They had, and I, I, I never thought I would say this. And I'm not even a big fan of um, of Biker Taker, but man, like American Badass Taker when he came up in there, Metallica. Yes. Now yes. That we are dead. That was like the best entrance he's ever done. That was dope. As they an American Badass, I don't even so like American they, Badass. So I was like, now that we are dead, I was like, well, that actually fits the Undertaker. Yes. yes. That was awesome. He came up in there. I'm like that. I don't even like the American Badass Taker, but that was awesome. That was yeah. an awesome way to come in, man. Yeah. Seriously, it worked. I like the Boneyard match a lot. Like I liked it a lot for a lot of different reasons. Um, number one, it's Taker. It's Taker. It's Taker. It's Taker. Anyone who's followed Taker his whole career, it, it was completely Taker from the hand-to-hand shit they did all the way down to even some of the magical supernatural shit they put up in it. So I thought it was dope. The only thing that I will complain about is that I did want to see the uh, goons get unmasked. And I was hoping Finn Balor would be one of them. But it's cool. Yeah. I'm honestly surprised we haven't seen him, but I forgot he's on NXT now. Yeah. But, Not that that yeah. matter. You can go from show to show now, thanks to that damn. Oh, uh. but anyway. Well, well, speaking of that, speaking of that, let's go ahead to night two. Yeah. Versus Rio Ripley for the NXT title. Yeah. No one knew that, and especially me. No one knew that she was channeling her inner Vegeta. I had no idea oh. that, she, that her outfit was Vegeta. I said it was Vegeta. Uh, I told you. It's yeah, you, you called that, bro. You did call that. Yeah, I you called, called that, for real. But yeah, it was I, great seeing her white, though. But if yeah. she, okay, but the thing is, if she had, if she had, like, gold, like a gold on her bodice, then I'd be like, okay, maybe that could be Vegeta, but I haven't really watched, um, Dragon Ball Super, so I really don't know. Nah, nah, it, it was the throwback, like the Saiyan armor. What threw us off was what she did with the pants. Like, if the pants would have just been straight blue, it would have been easy to see, but, you know. But it was still good. It was still good. I think Vegeta's like everybody's favorite, so it makes sense. I mean, shoot, that's what um, Xavier Woods dressed up as as WrestleMania 32. He just Vegeta. Vegeta's right. he's the savior of the show. Like you take Vegeta off that show, it's trash. <laughs> so I, but I guess that makes sense why she dressed up as him because he's like the toughest. He's the toughest thing on the show. So 
But then oh. that's kind of not anymore. He not. Know. They did him so and wrong with Super. The fact that she chose Vegeta and then she lost to Charlotte. I'm just like, oh. Uh, she didn't lose uh, to Charlotte. She got her ass whooped by Charlotte. This is the ass whooping I wanted to see Otis get off. Can't say that though, Prince. I can't say that though, cause that match was aggressively brutal. That match well, was Rhea people, getting her well, ass whooped. Well, how they played it out? <laughs> how they played out all the spots, all the hits, injuries, possible injuries. How they were able to <laughs> actually, able to play off her, uh, the, the, play the leg off and everything. I didn't realize how much shit Charlotte talked. Charlotte beat her ass yes, from bell to bell. She talks a lot. She talks shit in all her matches. It's just you know she the goofy crowd. You can't hear it. Like she look look yeah trash. look up the Becky she matches. She be cussing up a storm when she fight Becky. So no, but no, but didn't didn't Rick Flair did the same thing? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And I think yeah, she, and like Rick points it, I'm, I'll point it out. Like I like that's why I like having all of these discussions. Like Charlotte, you can see what she takes, how she takes elements from her father, like how she worked over like Rhea's legs in that match. That's something you said like, that her dad used to do a lot in the back. So you see the elements he takes. From Oh, she like beat the shit out of Rhea, though, man. Like, I felt bad. Well, I can't really say that. I mean, it was a very aggressive match all the way through. And I don't it think it was a match. I think it was an ass whooping. Like, it was, a mo it was the, one of the most aggressive women's matches I've ever seen. That match was... Remember that scene from the wood when Mike hit Stacy and Stacy just beat the shit out of him? That's what this was. Rhea hit the riptide and then spent the next 20 minutes getting her ass whooped. What were you saying, Irvin? Because here's the thing, if the match itself was dope though, it was a dope match because scientifically it makes sense because Rhea couldn't overpower because her legs got, got taken away from her. So it's like okay, because Rhea usually would just overpower you, but Chuck went for the leg early, so that took the power game away. You take the power game away, what the fuck you expect Rhea to do after that? So it made sense. Screaming her lungs out. She beat the shit out that selling, girl. She was selling that knee like I have heard anybody. I've never heard anyone sell a knee like that. Like she was just like she was being tortured, screaming. She was being and, tortured. <laughs> Otis should have been watching Chuck that night, taking notes. Like, ooh, did you guess I whooped your one ass? Yeah, you shot whooped your one ass. That's what he should have did. She beat the I shit out that girl. It was, it was a brutal match. I enjoyed it. It showed the very vicious side of the queen, how mm -hmm. she wants all the gold, and it didn't make Rhea Ripley look cheap. It did. She, looked, <laughs> it she got her ass whooped. Yeah, I don't but, say, it I, did, I, but it didn't make her look cheap. She, she went out like a chief. She went down swinging, but she got that ass whooped. Well, her knee was jacked up. She, she, she right, right. Out. She couldn't do nothing. Right, right, right. But then when her knee was jacked up, she couldn't get out of the figure eight. Right. She had no choice, but mm -hmm. she fought hard. It wasn't like what happened to Shayna. That's no. something different. Nah. Shayna yeah. got it more offense than Rhea did. No, she didn't, Prince. She, she did. She did. No, she didn't. She no, did. No, she didn't. Shayna was counter move, counter move, counter move. Shayna was beating the shit out of Becky before Becky hit that little weak ass roll up shit. She was beating the hell out of Becky most of that damn shit. But Chuck, Chuck went for them legs and just they didn't let up. Take it, I mean, there were, I mean, I know that she, uh, that uh, Shayna was pretty vicious on her. But no, nah, man, the difference is, is that they kind of went at it from the very beginning. And then, of course, when Charlotte took out that knee, that was it. Yeah, Chuck and went I mean, for the knee early and she couldn't do nothing. Because Rhea Ripley was actually dominating the early going but she hit one riptide and after well, that what she no, it, it, it was pretty much it was pretty much down the hill from there because after she took her knee out that's it that's when it started going downhill but Rhea was pretty dominant throughout and y'all man man i don't she know what match y'all was watching <laughs> oh gosh i hope her breast implant didn't pop Damn. Oh, you don't remember that. I don't know what match y'all was watching. Chuck beat Chuck dog walked to that whole damn match except the very beginning. I don't know what you're talking about, Prince. You must have uh, watched I'm not even uh, let's move on to the next match. Oh yeah, yeah. 
But I will make one note. Chuck versus Rhea was my favorite match of the entire night. It's my favorite match of the entire night. And it's on wax that he says this. I could give up. You got to give credit where it's due. No. The man, you talked so much crap about Charlotte. It's on wax now. Okay. Moving on. Oh, they need to take lessons. Uh, uh, this hasn't been rain. This has been a monsoon, man. Every fucking time. But no, no, <laughs> no, but look, look, oh, look, I enjoyed that match. Yeah, I'm disappointed that Sasha didn't win, but it, you can actually see the slow burn, the slow fractures of Bailey and Sasha. Them starting to slowly drift apart. I didn't like this fucking match. I did not like this match. And it's nothing to do with Naomi. Naomi was Naomi was the MVP of the match. Lacey did her thing. I did not like them acting like Tamina was Nia Jax. That's what that's what took me out of it. The fact that Tamina was even in a WrestleMania match, she lasted as long as she did. I'm kind of shocked. Um, I do not like the match. That's what I didn't like about it. The Tamina shit. Everything else was cool. But the fact that you start off the match, four of y'all jumping to me. Tamina is not that big where she should be throwing y'all off like that. If this was Nia Jax, I would have 100% been cool with it. Maybe y'all had two of them jump to me. No, 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 Prince, just because you big, you're not that big, don't mean you're not strong. But again and again and again and again, I'm like, who the fuck? It's unrealistic to me. That's what I didn't like about it. Now, once Tamina got out the match, it got good. But the fact that they planned it to go that way, I'm like, it's not real. Especially as big and strong as Lacey is. Lacey shouldn't need no help beating your ass. So Lacey can get probably the best right I have ever seen. Well, them rights wasn't doing shit to Tamina. And that's why I didn't like it. That's why I didn't like this match. Just because of that part. But Naomi, salute to her. She did her thing. Yeah, Naomi, she was on point, and she did. And she fought like a team. We knew she wasn't gonna win. We all knew this going in. But yeah, it's a slow burn. That, the end of that match with Haley it's definitely a slow burn. It's the remix yeah. of Triple H and Batista. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a, a real burn. slow burn, and I think that it was that was a that was a good way to do it. That's and, a good way uh, to break them up. You can be a face, but you can be a face 
but you can still be a cocky, arrogant asshole. That, that takes so much of the steam away from her, though. Because one of the things that makes Sasha as dope as she is is her ruthlessness. So I don't think that she can be as ruthless if she goes the cocky face route. Because Sasha, when she's being villainous, that's her at her finest. But, yeah, she's not a heel. It's impossible for her to be one. She insulting who she insult Jim Nyhart go to hell tell him I say how and shit yeah. and nobody booed her no matter what she do because she ain't gonna get booed nobody cares about Natty that's why yeah but it was Jim Nyhart I mean, I mean, she was talking about the anvil though and people cheered her for it Sasha's gotten to a point now that whatever she does <laughs> people like it whether she's fake or people love her it's kind of like Daniel Bryan no matter what he do people love him too much yeah. Yeah. Well, what were you saying, Irvin? I said she did it in Canada. In Canada, cheer. Yeah. Yeah. There were people, look, there were people that I've heard on podcasts that were trying to figure out why Natalia was in that match. So that's the reason why it didn't really matter, and it didn't have much effect. But in this case, with Sasha, Sasha just needs to be the boss. Can she just be the legit boss that I know she is? The dominant, the dominant woman that I know she could be. That's all I want for Sasha to be. Oh, it's coming. Heel face, cocky face. Just be a boss. It's because coming. I hate to say it. You can. It's hard for me to call her that if you if they keep booking her to lose. I'm just gonna say. I'm just gonna say it, man. I'm sorry, Sasha fans, but her record at WrestleMania is zero and five. Yeah, we catching up to LeBron James. We just need one more. Now sucks at WrestleMania. Yeah, her zero to Shawn Michaels. You know how they used to call Shawn Michaels? He's Mr. WrestleMania. But I was like, wait a minute. Look at his one loss record. His one loss record. He lost more than he won. If anybody should have been WrestleMania, it should have been The Undertaker. Yep. Mm. Well, this is one I'm real curious to hear how you really feel about it, real. Edge and Orton. Oh, this match. <laughs> Oh man, this match. I mean, as a child of the roots of aggression, or you know, this match has a special place in my heart because you know, it, it's Edge's big return. Just the same that with everything going on in the world, he couldn't be in front of a live audience, and Ultra Breeze was supposed to be there, you know, bringing Edge out. We ain't gonna get into that, but it was still dope to see Edge back in the ring, man. And the story with Orton was really good. Like, they really did, did a good job with this, and Orton. Bringing back his like vicious side that we know he is, like circa 2009, Randy Orton. I'm here. I was here for it, and I gotta say they did a good job with the story going into this match. Now the match, now the match itself, the storytelling in the match itself was very good. Mm-hmm. The only the match, match, the only the match. Was, it was okay. a minute too long. Thank you. I love the match. The match was great. It told a good story, but good lord, it was too long. Yeah. But it went almost, what, 30 mi- 35 minutes? 36 minutes. 36 minutes. I didn't mind the length. I didn't mind the length. Because they kept changing locations and they kept doing all this other stuff. I kept hearing about it was too long. You know? It was, man. Okay, I will say this right now. Excuse my language. People to say that. Fuck you. Agree. Well, then, I'm with you on. Not on your best day, man. I'm gonna still say it's too long. I come from an era where I used to watch Rick Flair and Harley Race fight each other for like 30, 40 minutes in a steel cage. They don't complain that Adam role player matches as long. Well, hey, I came from the same. I came from nearly the same generation as you, Irvin, and I'm going to say it was too long. <laughs> I come from an era where long matches were the norm, but not everybody can pull it off. And no, Regina, for, for the record, for the fact I was not literally talking about effing you, okay? But anyway, seriously, <laughs> <laughs> I can talk to you. I'm telling you that already, man. Oh, please. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. 
Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano go for 40 minutes and no one says shit. Now, here's the thing with some of those NXT main events that be going so long, man, and they be doing all those kickouts and stuff, mm-hmm. stuff like that. It makes it unrealistic at times. But, also had no but it's the greatest thing in the world when it's Adam Cole in this one. When it's Kenny Omega in them, it's the greatest thing in the world. They were shifting. I could see if they were in the same spot fighting for over 30 minutes, but they got to go from this place to that place. They beating up each other in the gym. They beating up each other in the conference room. They're doing innovative the shit. Brutal tour of the performance. Yeah. Ever That's what I'm saying. So when people say it was long, I'm like, was it boring? No. Just shut the fuck up then. Just always got to complain. To be honest with you, I was actually starting to drift off a bit because it was getting a bit too long. And that's just me. That's how it is with any match. Even if you go from room to room, they were like... (laughs) Did you say this about Adam Cole versus Gargano, Nate? Look, the thing is, is like with... With Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, even if they go like 15 minutes or 20 minutes, they don't look like they're completely gassed. They go over 40 they minutes, Nate. Like they were completely gassed. Nah, they don't. They look like it was time for, for them to be done. They don't go that long. Yes, they do. I just looked it up. They don't go that long. I just looked it up. Gargano versus Cole was 46 minutes. Gargano versus Cole at Toronto. Nearly 40 minutes. 40 minutes for anybody is going to knock you on your feet. I agree, but... Minutes, you haven't been in the game that long, you're going to get tired. But Adam Cole matches are even longer than that. Prince, they were exhausted. They could It was the story the they were telling. They were exhausted after the first hit. It, it wasn't a story. You can tell when somebody is out of gas. RKO, right? Edge can barely stand. They're counting. He has to crawl. He can barely move. They were move. tired, but they were telling the story. They were telling the story. They were telling the story, but the fact is, it's like if you go from room to room to room and you can barely throw a punch, can you just end it like at 25 minutes? You don't have to go 40. You can just end it there. And Prince, you said yourself, not every match should be long. Not every yeah, match yeah to I agree long. with that. But with the story they were telling, so you're though, telling me, You're telling me that you can actually defend a 40-minute match as long as the story's good. Depending on what story they're telling. Now, if you're just flipping and flipping and flipping and flipping and all that other it's shit. It's not about flipping. It's not about the style. I'm talking about an actual match that goes 40 minutes long. Adam Cole does and it all the time. Now that they're starting to dry out. But Adam Cole does it all the time. No, he doesn't. Okada does, does it all the time. And it's the greatest thing in the world. Okay, I can't defend Okada. But, but I'll say this. It looked like they were both out of gas. The story has been told. They beat the crap out of each other in the most unique way. This to that whole Spider-Man move that Edge did. <laughs> yeah, they were doing innovative moves. They were going to different places. They but, gave y'all the weapons, all that. I think the ending is kind of what kind of drove people back in. Was mm-hmm. the ending that Edge did? The conflict, the the, the how comp- mm-hmm. how conflicted he was, and how it looked on his right. face, and him crying. Yeah. And Brian, I'm not disagreeing with you by saying that it was long. Yeah, it was, but I don't think that's something to complain about. No, I am complaining about it being long, but I will say this. They actually were able to bring me back in with that finish. Right. That was a good finish. If it would have been only 10 minutes long, it wouldn't have had the same effect. But then the fact that Edge actually used submission to knock him out made it more interesting. Because you don't see Edge when you use submission. Right, right. Let me ask y'all something. This is the most BS thing I've heard. Stop trying to make a controversy out of, I don't know if it was the, the version of the sleeper hold he used or the part where they was uh, choking each other of the, the the hang ropes for people. I think it was choking each other. I think it was the choking each other. trying to compare it to, oh, it shouldn't have been that in folks' memories of Chris Benoit. I'm like, what the hell? I think they were trying to say after the dark side of the ring how they were describing how Chris Benoit, uh, I mean, uh, Chris Benoit killed himself. I don't think that they were trying to do that. They were actually oh, playing. You know, I wasn't even thinking about they that. Gym. They were in a gym. And, like, I think the dark side of the ring has kind of embedded in people's brains. And that was a very, very powerful documentary that I don't think a lot of people could shake. And it changed the minds of a lot of people who are who used to be fans of Benoit. So I understand why people could relate to that, but I 
I really didn't. I just saw it as, okay, when they going to break the glass? Right, like, right. When they going to break the glass? Right. I was waiting for them to take <laughs> out the barbell. But, yeah, I agree with you on, on that nature. Like, overall, though, that was definitely one of the better matches. Yeah. yeah. I will say the match itself was really good. I'm not gonna dis- I'm not gonna disagree with you on that. But I will say that it was too long, but it didn't take away from what they were trying to do. Well, it it, it came close to taking it away. I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of hurt. But they brought me back towards the end. Man. Just the drama of it, especially that DDT that he took. Yeah. Like damn. But yeah, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, now the final two matches. We're gonna go to the last match first. Yeah, Ron let's get that over with. And Drew McIntyre. It is over with. Yep. Let's put it this way: this way. if you're I, not from the UK, <laughs> you're probably not going to care about the outcome of the match. You're going to be happy the fact that he won. Yeah. Because he is the first WWE UK champion. He, I mean, he's the first. He, he's the first um, WWE champion from the United Kingdom. Well, yeah. all I'll say is, watch how trash this rain be. Be careful what y'all wish for, cause y'all about to get it—a whack ass rain. To be honest with you, it was kind of whack that he won with no crowd. Because for me, honestly, yeah. you can't really control the situation, but he should be surrounded by his countrymen. Because if you haven't been to WrestleMania. You would know that majority of people who are WrestleMania or come WrestleMania are from the UK. We come from the UK. Yeah, from from Scotland, from Ireland, from England. They he needed to be surrounded by his countrymen because that was a historic moment, mm. and that was disappointing for me because anything that is grounded in history should be witnessed. That's right. just. Me. Yeah, I agree. Bye, you're I'm glad Drew got his moment, but I would prefer that one definitely should have a crown. You should have yeah. that, that main event. That main wrong. event, I've taken shits that are more interesting in it, so, yeah. Worst uh, match on the card. Uh, 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 I all I'm going to say, say, all all like all say on that main, on that <laughs> Rocky Nation vs. Drew McIntyre match is, I didn't like how I was executed. I'm glad Drew won, but the match itself, I didn't like the execution. And now it's all Goldberg. It was already done before with Seth Rollins. Mm-hmm. Goldberg versus Lesnar. The first one was better than this shit. That, but him taking three or four F5s, I'm like, no. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And then when he went for the second one, that's what dude should have countered. Right. Yeah. Lesnar's F5s, that's what ruined it. The Claymore kicks were cool, but once he did F5... Kick out, F5 kick out, F5 kick out. That's what made it trash. Yeah. The first, the first Goldberg versus Lesnar was better than this shit. That's how trash this shit was. Oh, you talking about WrestleMania 20? 20, yeah. Oh, that's the only match I remember from WrestleMania 20. Oh, yeah. Wow, Prince. Wow. Wow, this Just to see that shit. Just to see that match again. I want to watch the Firefly Funhouse match again. It wasn't a match. It wasn't even a match. It wasn't even a match. It was more like it was more like a story told over time. It was so Mm -hmm. great. It was was so great. It was more about the storytelling than an actual fight. And I really like humbled and humiliated. I'm like. The only, the only time it was better is when Brock murdered him. But this, this is a second. This is a second. But I have to say, man, I was like, when I saw what they were doing with it, and when I saw John Cena come out in his trunks and the whole ruthless aggression, I was like, yes, they're going to go through, go through his whole career, and I'm here for this. I am here for this. I marked out like a 
bitch watching the itch. I was great. That was it great. was absolutely great to watch because not only was this something that was totally new, yep. he actually was his own worst enemy. He said mm. that um that this match is not is gonna be you're gonna have your um your it's like you're gonna have your toughest opponent and that's yourself. And I'm just like, okay, he's fighting his own demons. This, yep. this is badass. And then he was like, ruthless aggression. And then he kept missing. Yep. But it was even more interesting how you literally heard every word that Kurt Angle said at that iconic moment verbatim. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, you got me. <laughs> you got me right here. Yeah. Salute to the production team, the production team, and whoever edited all that. They, they, yeah, they the MVPs of that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this was probably the most entertaining I think, thing. I think from what I heard, I think I heard something that Bray Wyatt came up with it all on his own. And I guess Cena approved of it because if he, if he wouldn't have gone along with it if he didn't approve of it. So they yeah, were yeah, yeah. He actually not only um. I think he came up with it, but Vince actually loved it. Yeah, Vince loved it. That's why he put that line, that's some good shit in there. Vince loved it. <laughs> he loved it. They didn't censor that either. Nope. <laughs> yeah, this was the best moment of um of the overall thing, but... It kind of was. Some people say the Boneyard was the best overall thing. I think this is my No, opinion. it actually did trump it for me. Like, yeah, there was so much homage paid for all fans, uh, young and old, um, in the um, f- fun house thing. Like, if you were an old fan, whether you saw, you know, you saw, you know, glimpses of that WCW kid, you saw them pay homage to that. Like, they they did a lot with it, you know. So, but the, the one thing that Simon said that actually made sense when I watched the ups and downs of the Boneyard um, match, he said if you were a casual fan and you had no idea of the inner workings of wrestling as well as all these iconic moments, you're not gonna know what the hell is going on. Yeah. And he, yeah funny. That's the one nitpick I would agree with Simon about this because that that fun firefly fun house match that was definitely for hardcore wrestling fans. Yeah, it's for people who've yeah. been watching the product for a while, but I felt like um this mania was this mania was a treat gift wrap to kids who were born after 1993 if you were born after 93 you likely grew up during the ruthless aggression era because like me like me right right <laughs> like like you know I, I wasn't born I, I was born way before that so i still enjoyed it but a lot of the key moments that people are going to take away from this came from ruthless aggression era stuff Reaction was yes. Titus O'Neil's reaction after that was perfect. <laughs> that was perfect. I, I don't know what I just saw. Yeah. Keep getting them checks, Titus O'Neil. All right. So, in closing, favorite matches, favorite things overall from um, both shows. Favorite things. I'm, I'm going to say the four things that I'm going to take from this mania. Number one, the Firefly Funhouse stuff. I want to watch that again because it was so great. The Boneyard match was great. I want to watch that again. Charlotte versus Rhea. Even though the wrong person did win, I will admit that, I still like the match. And even though it was too long, it was a bit long, I would watch Rhea versus Edge again. I'd watch it again. For me, uh, Bone, Boneyard, Firefly, definitely. Um, uh, Edge versus Orton. And just to be a little different from the rail, even though I agree with you on Charlotte and Rhea, the wrong person won, but it was still a good match. I'm going to go with, just because of the ending, I'm going to go with uh, uh, Otis and Dolph. Not on the match, but because But of the, the moment. End. Yeah, the moment. The moment at the end. I feel that. I feel that. And it had the most low blows in the whole event, so that's probably another reason why. It had two low blows. <laughs> Although, honorable mention goes to the latter match. Oh yeah, the, the ladder match. Hilarious. The tag team ladder match is gonna be a sleeper here. If I had to put a number five, 
it would be between that, it would be between that and and honestly the SmackDown Women's Title match because I really liked it. So yeah, that that Smack that tag that a singles ladder match with the tag team belts is gonna be a sleeper hit as the years goes by. For me, there's only two things from this whole thing that I will ever rewatch. Um, Boneyard match and uh, Charlotte versus Rhea. Charlotte versus Rhea was the best thing. Wow. It legit was. Wow. Everything wow. else, everything else is like, do I really want to rewatch, you know, Bliss and Cross against Kabuki? No. Elias Corbin? No. Becky Shayna? No. The only match wow. I, w- I will legit sit through again is Chuck versus Rhea. Boneyard wow. was just cool, but actual match. Oh, wax. Charlotte oh, versus Rhea was the best thing. This is all wax. This is all wax. This is all this wax. This is all wax. What? Well, y'all act like I've never. The match is Charlotte versus Rhea. It was the best match. Chris, as much as you keep talking about Charlotte, calling her a role player, saying she's she still is everything. a role player. No, but you say she ruins everything. That would automatically be a disqualification for any match that's good. But you said that match was your favorite. It was, and she's ruining NXT while she at it. Look at what's no, going on with no, Rhea. No, Look at Bianca. She still had the best match of the night, though. That don't change. She had the best thing going that night that you can actually rewatch and replay and not get bored. That was Scientific Clinic. So, yeah, I fuck with that one a lot. Edge and Orton was good, but it was too long to want to sit through again. Lorel, you heard it. Irvin, yeah. you heard it. Yeah. What his favorite match is. Yeah. Um, this is really long one. All right, yep. it's your turn. Okay. Um, I like some of the sleeper hits. I will admit, Elias versus Corb, um, Elias versus Corbin was pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's actually something that surprised me. I like Drew Kulak versus Cesaro. That that was a sleeper hit, a best way to start off. Um, the latter match was fun. Like it was just, it was fun. I'm happy the tag teams were not all there. I'm happy it was just the representatives. It said it just being three, it said like six. It so three. it made it more fun to me having no Big E, um, having no J, and de- and no Miz. Like, I'm kind of happy that they weren't there because it made it more fun. And that finish, I could not stop laughing because I'm not, I wasn't sure if they meant to do it. <laughs> he just fell off. <laughs> yeah. And I, that, that match was great. I enjoyed that. Uh, what other match was there? The Boneyard match for night one used to be my favorite, the top one, but by far is the Firefly. The Firefly Funhouse match that has to be like the top, the the top one of that that highlight the entire night. And I will admit, Edge versus Orton did tell a great story. It just dragged. Right, and there's no way anyone's going to want to sit through that ever again because no. it was how long no. it was. So yeah, well, it, I will definitely go back and rewatch the Firefly Clubhouse. Or if you do watch it, you're going to watch it in parts. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 The fee, the, but here's the thing about Firefly Funhouse, and this is why I didn't put it up there. I'm predicting that after the fourth or fifth time you rewatch it, it's not going to be the same. It's dope the first two, three times, but after that, it's like, uh, but Chuck and Rhea, you can throw that on anytime. Chuck, I mean, God, you got me calling her that. With the story Charlotte, they told? Yeah. No, but Charlotte and Rhea. Charlotte and Rhea Ripley. That actually was a really, that was, that was the Best most match. aggressive women's match I've ever watched. The, I think the most, uh, it, was, it wasn't as aggressive as Becky versus Charlotte and Evolution. That mm-hmm. was brutal. Yeah. But that was extremely brutal. But... I like to see women be more aggressive in matches because I think with the women's division, the one thing that bothered me about it is that they acted like they were all friends. I'm like, y'all can't all like each other if you got one belt to fight. Mm. Like, I'm sorry. Right. So, I mean, I would like to see more aggression in women's matches. And that was the most aggression that I've ever seen. And I liked it. I really did enjoy it. But I knew that Charlotte, I knew that Charlotte has a very aggressive streak. 
and we all know that Rhea has a very aggressive streak. Mm. I mean, shoot, she beat the shit out of Shayna. <laughs> so that shows you right there. She has a very aggressive streak. So mm. I enjoyed that match. I thought it was good. But by far, when it comes to bringing everything around full circle, it has to be Firefly. It, it has to be Firefly for me. That came around full circle. Everything that Cena did not do, everything that he did not do, like I think the icing on the cake for me was when they actually redid WrestleMania 30, when he yep. came out as Bray Wyatt, like old, like old cult leader Bray. Yeah, the rocking chair and shit. Yeah, that was dope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and the, and the one thing that Cena did not do at the time because he was a true blue black, the true blue baby face, is that he didn't hit him with the chair. He hit him this time, but miss. But miss. So it shows you who he really is. That was a really great, a great way to cap it off. I thought that was amazing. I thought it was I'm great. Saying, if you're a true fan of storytelling, and I'm a, one of those people who loves good storytelling in wrestling, Cena and Bray, what they did in the Firefly Funhouse stuff was great. It was creative. Was great. Yes. Very and original fun. and very creative. But I'm just yeah, saying, I don't think it's going to age well. I think after you watch it three times, it's not going to have the same effect. I don't be honest with you, friends, I really think it's going to age well. I think I have to be curious to see how it ages. Like, if I go back to watch this six months from now and I still enjoy it, then I think it's going to age well. I think it'll age well. If I, if I, like, today's April 6th. Today is April 6th. Now, six months from now, which will be on um, the mm-hmm. uh, September. If I go back and watch this in October and I still loved it, then I think it'll age. I, I think you'll still like it, but I, I don't think it's gonna hit as hard. Like the first time you saw, it, you're like, "Oh my god, it's the greatest thing ever!" But you rewatch no, it. No, you're... this is just my own opinion on that. I think this is the last time we're gonna see Cena for a while. Thank God. I'm yeah. probably after that, Cena's gonna go away for a while. He has. No, to but actually, no. But to be honest with you, it, I mean, this will be a best way to send it off. And, and he really does need to disappear for a while after this. He don't need to come back. I mean, the dude's making Hollywood movies now, so we, we don't need... If this was the way to write him off for at least for good for a while, it was perfect. It was perfect. And plus, it, and plus, it kind of fits what he's doing now. This was basically like a movie, pretty much. So I was like, it, it kind of fits. Yeah. yeah Superstar tonight. You know, he's trying to be a Hollywood star now, so... Superstar of the night. I'm going to give it to Chuck. Chuck and that damn badass role she had. Chuck and then, um, damn, part of me wants to go with the Boneyard, but it was cool, but I don't think it was better than Chuck versus Rhea. But I think it was dope, too, though. Honestly, that, that road that Charlotte had, oh, my gosh, gorgeous. I would love to have it, but that thing probably, probably cost about 10, 10 grand. I probably couldn't afford to keep it. <laughs> Probably still got them. So I'm gonna get this out the way too, because y'all keep trying to insinuate something. Chuck is still a role player. She is still the cancer of that woman's division, but she had a great performance. She had a great performance. Yeah, we know, Chris. She's still gonna be a role player. Yeah, you know, Chris. She's still gonna be a role player. Your eyes. You gave her credit nice. Yeah, you gotta give credit where it's due. Sure. I. Your friends. Yeah. No, look, if you give a credit, what credit is due, I tip my imaginary hat off. 